and the faulty method of nutrition the, uh, these are which is being practiced this is again problem then poor management practices we will deal in details uh, one by one then um, this uh, now uh, in last uh, three to four years in central uh, maharashtra uh, central uh, india we have this flower uh, and fruit drop these, these are the problem they may be uh, physiological pathological or entomological drop then again uh, in uh, central uh, uh, um, india then why bar this is again one problem is coming up they they are related to the mostly related to the disease and this grading like <coughs> then uh, sunburn again uh, sunburn which led uh, sunburn which is uh, largely due to this uh, um, uh, fruits developed from the late flowering uh, this is also deteriorating the quality of the fruit um, then um, as i said uh, this is pre planting material rough lemon rootstock it is used and uh, um, irregular flowering this is uh, again this is related more related to the heavy soil and in non maintenance of the uh, crop load uh, uh, farmers are actually taking uh, so many fruits from uh, from a bahar that is again that uh, too much load cost to uh, fruit drop or may be quality deteriorate again this as say earlier this uh, under nutrition uh, particularly in, there are some sometimes there are a deficiency sometimes a toxicity um, may, may be uh, major nutrient NP, npk or, or the micronutrient we have seen uh, there then uh, uh, as as i told earlier the heavy soil this is uh, again one of the major problem Uh, which which uh, which has the poor drainage the the regulation of the bahar means uh, uh, maintaining the water stress imposing water stress it became uh, difficult uh, then that that can cause the ir ir irregular or erratic bearing uh, one uh, may they may be the, that lead to on and off year uh, fruit drop water stagnation in such heavy soils called uh, uh cause this fruit drop there that ultimately turns into poor yield and the quality of fruits then this uh, in heavy soil then the uh, uh, nutrient uh, if the water gets stagnates that is nutrient gets goes leached down that availability of nutrient is again problem and this in in such soil the life span of these orchard is shorten that uh, and Uh, shorten and uh, this uh, soil borne problem like phytophthora is again uh, major problem in such heavy soils then uh, some uh, biotic uh, uh, factors like incidence of uh, black fly phytophthora uh, colletricum then the canker in particularly in acid limes uh citrus sila uh, um, uh, fruit sucking moss this is the major problem and in general declining uh, in general the decline of the orchard these are the major problem we, if you go to this uh, slide you can see the, the gamosis gamosis means the phytophthora it comes uh, uh, with a different uh, symptom that uh, fruit rot uh, maybe root rot maybe maybe um, uh, what we call Uh, uh, and the leaf, uh, we have also seen the symptoms on the leaves that resulted into into this uh, uh, maybe fruit drop or ultimately trees made uh, uh, die then uh, sooty mold can canker is a major problem in uh, in a, particularly in acid lime this is the dry root rot then uh, again this um what we call the hail storm this has been uh, frequently actually experience uh, right from the december uh, december to march we are uh, experiencing that and that uh, causes injury to the to injury to the fruit injury to the tree trunk injury to the to the leaves leaf uh, leaf fall fruit fall all all those are been uh, experienced with the hail storm damages now 
if you go to the citrus actually it may bear 1 to 2 lakhs of the flower uh, and out of that the 7 to 10% actually set uh, these uh, percentage of this uh, number of flower that sets in acid line it uh, it is around 7 uh, 7 to 10 percent and that's why we get the maximum number of uh, the fruits in case of the uh, in case of the acid line but ultimately the final product uh, this uh, from the flower actually we get only one to two percent of the harvest in case of the mandarin and in case of the sweet orange uh, this flowers are in such number it it is around five hundred times out numbers the number of fruits uh, if you uh, go to the uh, drops uh, the, we have the two major bars this is ambia bar and mruga bar uh, this ambia bar actually ambia mruga and hasta th these are the uh, three bars but major are two uh, if you go uh, if you see this uh, around uh, 60 percent of this ambia bar naturally 40 percent of the uh, 30 to 40 percent and 10 percent of the hasta bar uh, whereas this drop, if you count the drop, the, the 70 to 83, the around 70 to 83 percent of the drop is physiological drop, then um, uh, around 8 to 10 percent of the uh, pathological drop and 8 to 17, 17 percent of the uh, uh, entomological drop. Now, we can see there are uh, generally three waves of the drop. First wave, wave just it just begins after the fruit set, or it may when the flower just turns to the fruits uh, during that first wave. Second wave that is around uh, maybe one and a half or two months after the, uh, the uh, after uh, fruit set that is around May to June, and third uh, third wave. That is where the premature or pre-harvest fruit drop. Actually, we cannot. Um, uh, these are the three major uh, wave. Although the fruits drops may be continued, remains continues from the fruit set up to the harvest. But these are the major three wave where we experience the uh, uh, fruit drop. Now the first wave there uh, during that this uh, flowering uh, after flowering. Uh, the there may be uh, very small fruits and those are uh, with peduncle that those uh, fall down or those drop down uh, this is this is largely due to the natural overproduction or uh, number of flowers when the number of flowers are more uh, than that and this is also happens made uh, in sometimes they are, we have the recurrent flowering in case of the citrus uh, where are the flowerings uh, which is delayed one and the earlier uh, earlier uh, uh, fruits may kick it the, the competition that uh, leads to uh, this uh, uh, drop of this fruit fruitlet we can say and uh, uh, this is actually called this uh, necessary drop if these uh, fruits are out in numbers uh, then this uh, then the tree can bear uh, this it, 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 it becomes necessary. Sometimes we, we do encourage uh, this such kind of drop uh, to maintain the number of uh, number of these uh, fruits per tree so that we can get um, uh, quality production. Um, uh, few reasons like pure pollination, nutrient shortages, and this competition for these uh, um, uh, hormones. This is also lead to this uh, this uh, this drop. No doubt, uh, in case of this uh, uh, citrus, we have stimulus pharmacopoeia. Stimulus pharmacopoeia. In case of the certain varieties, there even though there is certain stimuli for this pollination, there is, uh, happens to be fruit set, uh, and there is uh, those are uh, fruit set. Those are remain seedless. But uh, this uh, some in in case of the poor pollination, where the pollens are defective. And maybe pollen uh, dry down due to hot temperature. This is also lead to this uh, 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 maybe a drop of these uh, fruits. And then <clears throat> second wave. Uh, 
uh, generally one to uh, one one to two months after blooms, when wherever the fruits are uh, more than the pre size, uh, that young fruits uh, that those abscess uh, due to excessive number of fruits, uh, excessive maybe excessive number of uh, uh, fruits. This is also due to this combination. This is also maybe turns as, as the natural uh, drop sometimes and. Uh, it 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 may it may increase due to these certain uh, uh, environmental factor particularly this uh, increase in temperature the fruits for a, of size from right from the pea size to the marble size those are uh, dropped down and this is uh, credited to particularly high temperature in summer uh, then this competition for uh, particularly for for this carbohydrate uh, then the third wave, this is the um, much important uh, as far as the economics, uh, economics to the farmer is concerned. And the, the where these um, mature around maybe uh, premature, those are maybe turned to harvestable, that mature, uh, premature to harvest, uh, harvestable fruits, those dro drop down. Uh, this, uh, Right way, maybe if you consider the ambia bar, that those flowering, that those flower in uh, January, the after August, there's after August onwards to till this uh, harvest, uh, this uh, drop actually experience. Uh, and in first wave, generally we tend to have uh, uh, fruitlets with peduncle, uh, but here. Uh, this it is around calyx junction. It is without uh, um, generally, and the this is the um, this is largely due to in, maybe internal and external factors. We will see in detail progressively. Now we, you can see this is the um, we can say the uh, first wave drop, the post bloom drop, where the flower and Fruit drop that uh, generally occur there. Uh, here, the premature fruit drop is. Uh, then this is the most important drop. Uh, this is actually the pre-harvest drop. Uh, now, in case of this uh, citrus, we we tend to have drop uh, drop with. With peduncle or without uh, peduncle, where these uh, calyx is attached to the fruits, uh, there or uh, the uh, just one one to two centimeter above the calyx, where it is attached attached to the uh, tree. There uh, the degradation of the cell wall due to the hydrolytic enzymes formed in this zone that is called the abscissian zones. Uh, Abscissian zones, these two abscissian zones are reported in case of the citrus at these uh, two junctions. There, uh, there usually happens to these um, abscissian layer and where the fruit dropping experience. Um, this is uh, largely because of this, we can term it as the physiological drop. It is largely because of this uh, competition for this carbohydrate, water, hormones, and other metabolites, we uh, metal uh, metabolites which cause this uh, drop. Now, what are the factors that govern the fruit drop? Stress, stress that may be of any kind. It may be either high temperature. It may be uh, stress due to untimely rains. If the, we have the uh, uh, dry, dry, dry weather followed by the uh, untimely rains. We we can uh, experience then hail storms, or if if, you, if you there have a continuous rain and if water stagnate there in orchard, that also elevated the stress and such could cause this uh, uh, such stresses could cause the uh, fruit drop. Uh, the with the increased temperature, it is, it is reported that it with increased temperature, the rate of the drop is more that generally we taste uh, 
uh, uh, when the fruitlet size are around uh, me me you may say the piece size the, if the temperature goes beyond beyond the 40 degree centigrade uh, generally uh, this uh, drop actually uh, uh, to drop actually occur there then the intermediate factors that may be injury uh, that may be translocation of food or a high rate or rate of respiration these are all these conditions and those are created due to the stress uh, and again this we have the water stress if if you the if we uh, found their water stress or particularly uh, excess water is given after long dry spell that also elevate the fruit drop particular then what are the factors that influence influence the uh, fruit drop the health of the plant it is very much uh, the plants needs to be in a good shape all of the uh, if you consider it as the foliage trunk twig or roots all the, those should be in good shape it is uh, actually um, around 40 healthy number of leaves is are necessary for the quality production of mandarin in particularly the, again the uh, where the size of the leaves and age of the leaves is uh, matter there young young the leaves those are actually four month old means that is from the past season growth actually those are the source and the, the uh, young leaves those just uh, put forth those, those are sink one though, uh, that are uh, that are not that much important compared to these the four month leaves and there those should be in gay, uh, good shape those those uh, should be healthy with the uh, disease free as well as these uh, pest free particularly if you see these uh, sila like if there is infestation of infestation of sila or uh, mites or maybe some sucking pest, uh, the leaves are damaged, then this uh, fruit, uh, maybe there are likely chances of getting less number of fruits, uh, or uh, maybe it encourage the drop, or may it may uh, sometimes, uh, it is uh, reported that it also hamper the flowering also. So the age of the leaves, size of the leaves size if you can see these in case of the mandarin we can get uh, 20 20 22 centimeter square of leaves again the 50 around 50 centimeter square of the leaves naturally they wear this leaf size is uh, good uh, there this uh, quality or retention of the fruit on the tree is uh, uh, better compared to those with infected leaves or diseased leaves or less number of the leaves Now, uh, again, it has been uh, reported that nitrogen, again, this is the major uh, nutrient that is required as far as this uh, citrus is con considered there. Uh, the major, if you, uh, if you want around one, if you harvest around one tons of this fruit, it, it takes all, uh, around 11 kg of this nitrogen. Uh, the nitrogen has this um, role in reduction of the abscission and this is also important for the synthesis of the uh, synthesis of the auxins. The bulk of this uh, bulk of this uh, dry matter or can we can say bulk of this uh, fruit fruiting body is uh, nitrogen is essential for that and we, we have the sources like uh, uh, we can correct the deficiency of the nitrogen in particularly with the foliar sprays of the urea or DAP or potassium nit nitrate that can be utilized for this uh, nitrogen uh, correction of this uh, deficiency. Then carbohydrate. The, again, the carbohydrate is the source of the energy there. Uh, it, um, if this carbohydrate, it has been uh, observed that uh, in abscission zone uh, where these uh, fruitlets or fruit uh, drop that in near abscission zone 
the reduction in the carbohydrate or disappearance of the uh, disappearance of the carbohydrate is observed that tells that uh, this carbohydrate is essential for the um, uh, retaining the fruits or development of the fruit um, the use of the carbohydrate uh, or uh, essentially is a uh, carbohydrate is also essential for the uh, thickening of the cell walls that also um, that also uh, can check this uh, uh, fruit drop there then what are the strategies to uh, control the fruit drop plant protection plant protection means we have to maintain the healthy foliage healthy roots then the pruning of the dead wood the pruning of the dead wood means the last year once we have once we harvest the fruits there remains the dead wood and those are uh, pre disposal for, uh, for this uh, diseases and that will get activated next year and that uh, that can carry that load that's why the removing of the dead wood is utmost important in case of the citrus uh, avoid deep culti cultivation deep cultivation this is more related to the um, health of the roots if you uh, if you cultivate deep then this uh, there are likely chances of damaging the roots if if the roots get damages damage there there may have entry for the certain pathogens particularly like phytophthora and uh, there are there may cause uh, in future uh, leaf fall fruit drop or may uh, tree may uh, die then selection of the intercrops generally uh, we have recommended to have this uh, crop like um, leguminous crops and those are beneficial for the citrus leguminous either leguminous crop or green manuring green, green manuring crop those add uh, fertility or nit nitrogen to the soil those are important one uh, but these uh, uh, growing crops like uh, cotton or uh, sorghum or what we call jar or in case in, uh, when this orchard is uh, um, means uh, when the juvenile in particularly uh, tour what we got that such crops are actually um, not recommended for uh, as a intercrop in case of the citrus then avoid uh, use of weedicide particularly when this uh, fruit drop is trigger uh, and, and the situation like the continuous rains are there. continuous rains are there water is stagnated high humidity is there we decide the farmers are using we decide and that too indiscriminately means where um, means they are doubling the quantity than what we that what we recommended that also uh, leads to the stress and that may cause this uh, fruit drop again then indiscriminate use of the growth regulator uh, particularly growth retardant like paclobutrazol we have actually uh, in certain uh, cases particularly in uh, um, ambia bar uh, this paclobutrazol is recommended there with the soils those orchard those uh, actually difficult to uh, flower in such orchards this um, paclobutrazol is recommended however indiscriminate use of the paclobutrazol uh, particularly the quantity or uh, concentration what you are the farmers are is doing that may cause um, uh, out number of the flowers if the nutrition nutrition is not properly done and this uh, um, then again there is likely chances of the competition and the flowers are fruit uh, fruit drop is uh, likely to occur there then some sometime uh, what do's and don'ts are again uh, important there 
um, there are the certain strategies which can avoid the fruit drop. Water stagnation during, particularly during rainfall, where the continuous rains are there, and these uh, atmosphere is shady there, uh, the sun is hardly uh, there. In such case, uh, the uh, if water stagnate in orchard, that may leads to the fruit drop. Uh, again, the situation like sometimes. Uh, summer during summer when the particularly after march onwards the temperature rises to 40 de degrees and the succulent stage is uh, synchronized there that also lead to the drop then this in such condition the orchard is to be maintained cool there that uh, many practices like uh, use of this uh, sprinkler then uh, uh, mulches we can follow follow there to maintain the uh, uh, season uh, temperature drop down to, to certain extent. Now, earlier I talked regarding this uh, water stagnation and stress. This is the uh, technology uh, our university has developed uh, for this, uh, where this phytophthora is a major problem due to the water stagnation. Uh, the uh, raised bed planting particularly uh, uh, with uh, the uh, red, fifty percent uh, percent reduction in the uh, plant distance means uh, generally we recommend six by six on flat uh, land. Here we have recommended six by three meter. Actually, this is the uh, here the bed is uh, of uh, around forty five to fifty centimeter height, and from the center center. Uh, to the uh, base, it is uh, upper top is around 1.5 meter. The bed width at bottom is three uh, three meter, means around 10 feet, and distance between uh, two bed is around three feet. On that uh, bed, uh, this uh, uh, three meter uh, at the distance of three meter, we are uh, planting the trees on the uh, north or uh, north south direction. So, due to this, actually, due to this uh, um, uh, height, height of the bed, water do not stagnate here. It is it gets uh, it gets um, evacuated all the way. The it has the, the field has the good drainage capacity and the chances of stagnating water there near the root zone. Uh, it's uh, again there uh, there is very less chances. Now, this is uh, one thing is that uh, since it is a high density planting, we need to have uh, pruning uh, every, maybe uh, uh, two years, uh, after two years, uh, once the plant uh, attained the age of uh, six years, uh, after, thereafter, every two years, we need to have uh, pruning there. Uh, since the advantage of this, uh, again, is that the plant has the erect canopy there. Uh, this, that's why it can accommodate, accommodate this uh, number, more number of plant. And, but once it has the canopy is, is uh, uh, canopy is there become dense, it needs to be pruned there to, uh, to actually penetrate the sunlight in better manner. Now, the strategies for this uh, fruit drop management, the balance and complete nutrition is more important. And the nutrition that is around uh, this RDF, uh, if you see the RDF of the citrus, it is around 600, uh, 600 yen uh, to uh, 100, uh, 1,500 gram of the yen. Uh, in different states and in different for the different crops. For P, it is around 300 to 500 gram. For K, it is around 300 to 500 gram per tree. The balanced nutrition means the RDF that should also include the um, micronutrient, the zinc, 
Heras and boron, this play this uh, important role there. Around uh, 250 gram of this uh, zinc sulfate, around 200 gram of ferrous sulfate, and uh, 250 gram of the boron is re uh, recommended there as a RDF in a different crop. Uh, we can also correct this uh, deficiency in particularly uh, with this uh, spraying of 0.5% uh, zinc sulfate or maybe 0.5% uh, of ferrous sulfate and boron. 0.1% of the boron. Uh, uh, twice a year for this, uh, and, and particularly dur during the month of uh, July, August, and uh, or these, uh, for this uh, Murgabar in October, November, where these uh, premature fruits uh, drop is reported during that period, uh, the spraying is recommended to correct the deficiency. deficiency. Then INM. INM this integrated nutrient management uh, that includes uh, all the biofertilizers like uh, Pseudomonas, like Trichoderma, Azotobacter, PSB, or maybe VAM. Uh, this biofertilizer that also alter the soil structure, texture, and uh, this uh, sometimes when we can we see this uh, water get aeration is there for particularly. If we, if we use this biofertilizer as well as these organic sources uh, in particularly for, for uh, organic sources like FYM or uh, um, wormy compost or maybe um, um, maybe neem cake particularly for the citrus. Then use of the right irrigation. Right irrigation means uh, uh, either we recommend their irrigation at right time, at right quantity. Giving too much of the, pouring too much of the water um, at, a, at a time, then the pouring uh, water with uh, uh, increased number of the frequency, uh, less quantity with more frequency, then less, more quantity with less frequency. Uh, again, this is important there, the less quantity uh, with more frequency that will lead to the better health of the plant compared to the when the pouring the water uh, indiscriminately in, uh, in the orchard. Then fertigation. Fertigation is again the stage wise um, uh, with the help of the fertigation, uh, the nutrition are again managed according to the stage. Uh, use, Generally, uh, when we apply the soil, the nutrition, uh, RDF, those are maybe at the breaking of stage or maybe thereafter, one month of, uh, after the, uh, maybe uh, flowering or one, uh, one and a half month after the flowering, the uh, next dose is given there. But with the fertigation interval, if you increase the interval of the uh, interval number of intervals with um, nutrition there that the yield and again this uh, maintaining the quality as well as well as fruit drop that can be checked with uh, again this uh, quality is outstanding with the fertigation then timely disease and insect pest management this is again <clears throat> one thing uh, if you manage disease uh, and pest insect pest regularly uh, as uh, according to the schedule, then there may be likely less, likely less chances of uh, the fruit drop in particular. So, uh, we, if you go to the uh, hormonal control of uh, fruit drop, uh, particularly uh, NA, 24D, 245T, uh, uh, and uh, CCPA, these are uh, found to be, these are found to be uh, effective for the control of the uh, uh, fruit drops. Uh, this concentration may vary from the 10 ppm to uh, 15 ppm. Uh, yeah, as far as any concern, concerned, it is around 10 ppm, 24D, uh, or uh, uh, 24D, it is around 15 ppm. 245D, it is around 15 ppm. And again, CCPA, it is around uh, 10 ppm. Uh, Gibralin has also the role uh, to play for the control of the uh, food drop, it is uh, it is around 15 ppm of concentration is, uh, recommended for that. Then cytokinins like CCPU and 6B 
these are so uh, um, effectively check the fruit drop uh, from uh, this is uh, steroid the brasilian is uh, particularly uh, has a role to play in checking of the fruit drop the brasilian these are the uh, uh, steroids uh, it it is it effectively it is known as this anti uh, abscessin hormone again it um, uh, it has this synergistic or additive effect on the different different uh, different auxins or gibberellins and uh, it also imparts the it also imparts to resistance to the plant then growth promoters like yan atka actually actually the quantity is around uh, 10 ppm uh, uh, this is also uh, we go if you go through the references this is effective for the checking of the fruit drop now if you see what is the mechanism for the control of the fruit drop uh, this is the case study of uh, naphthalic acid uh, naphthalic acetic acid we have these genes uh, for the formation of uh, abscission zone ndpg2 md mde g1 these genes uh, form during uh, these genes lead to the formation of abscission zone in in fruit whereas the gene for the fruit softening are mdpg1 mdacs1 mdac01 now what this na does it check the formation of the genes um, abscission gene um, forming uh, zone forming genes that is mdpg2 and mdeg1 uh, but the side side effect of this of this uh, na is that it liberate the ethylenes so uh, to counteract that the avg uh, ammonium vesyl glycine amino acid vesyl glycine actually this protein is provided and if you use it in combination that can check uh, about this abscission uh, zone formation and bring uh, down uh, or check the fruit drop now entomological drop entomological fruit drop uh, this is uh, largely due to the fruit fly the drop actually um, uh, initiate maybe around uh, august something like august or 2 to 3 month before uh, the the fruits come to the har harvesting uh, this uh, the, it we can very well manage with this uh, methyl eugenol uh, fruit fly trap uh, around uh, 25 traps we can provide for that uh, 25 traps per hectare um, that in month of the august that is two to three months prior to the harvest then second strategy should be collection and distribution of these damaged and fallen fruits uh, third then pupil stage that it remains in the soil that uh, around two to three cent centimeter below the soil um, if you cultivate that soil, the pupa automatically get killed. Even if you mix with the, some granular insecticide, that pupa gets killed. Next is drop due to this fruit sucking drop. Uh, this is a, um, a fruit sucking mod drop. The materna, ancillaria, polonica, and genera, these are the species actually. Uh, observed in particular, but uh, the materna is very very much com common. The drop is in such a way that it can uh, a single moth can uh, hamper around uh, twenty to twenty five fruits overnight, and this is uh, this is the nocturnal in habit. Uh, once it, uh, this it sucks this is uh, juice from the fruits and it it remain activate uh, around. Um, um, around uh, means evening hour, evening to night hours, particularly when the uh, sunset. Uh, um, generally, when uh, during the dark period, uh, 
it sucks the it sucks the juice from the fruits and that fruits get uh, actually maybe after 3 to 4 day it it will get uh, infection with uh, fungal infection and fruits drop, drop down Now, now, what is the strategy for the checking of that? Then, uh, alternate if the alternate host for this larvae is uh, what we call the Tinospora cardifolia, that is gull whale, Coculus hirsutus, Wasson whale, then Convolvulus arabensi, Chan whale. Whatever this alternate host, we need to de uh, destroy them. This is one. Then. Creating smoke by burning uh, grass at evening to night hours. Then we can install the mercury lights in the four corners and that mercury lights with kerosene, uh, wide mouth kerosene uh, pots. Then the baits like malathion with uh, jaggery and the fruit, fallen fruit juice uh, with water, which we can have around. Uh, 20, uh, one bed for to 22, 25 breath. Here the white uh, mouth container we use and uh, used to uh, tie to the, means hang to the trees so that uh, this uh, uh, um, fruit sucking moth get, gets attracted towards this, uh, towards the beds. Then again, one step, the neem, neem oil uh, is found effective for the checking of this uh, fruit sucking moth. Um, individually, actually, uh, no effort work here. We have to take the measure um, collectively there. Uh, collectively there, all these uh, whatever the recommendation we need to follow. Only then and then only in uh, we can check uh, to certain extent. Again, the moths, moth, this fruit sucking moth, we can collect with the uh, net also. It is uh, it means. If, if during night hours, if you um, if you means if they if we can if you put torch against them, they get they get means uh, uh, easily they are get shock and easily we can pick up pick them up. Then this is the uh, new. New uh, paste actually once in a while they, this was a visitor in a sit, uh, um, uh, particularly in citrus in Mandarin, but this become uh, means the regular now since two years here with Mandarin. This this is the uh, paste from, uh, from pomegranate a fruit borer that honor butterfly. Actually, the uh, peculiar symptoms. Uh, it at a distal end we can see a small hole a black color hole uh, and the fruits remain uh, the tree tree it doesn't drop down and uh, the, and this is actually um, once, once we harvest food that has become noticeable only there the trichoderma chilonis is eggs that uh, one lakhs per acre or a sanitary pole, 10.26% OD, that is 15 milliliter. Check this, uh, check this uh, fruit borer or another button. Then mice. <laughs> With mice, generally uh, small fruits uh, drop down, uh, means with B size, sometimes P size. But this quality gets uh, much deteriorated with the my, uh, mites, and the fruits are uh, become unmarketable in particular. The dico fall 18.5%, 27, 27 milli of, or dipenthuron, uh, 50 vetiver probably 20 gram, or proper guide, 57 EC, 10 ml, or sirum mesifen, uh, uh, 3.9 ml per 10 liter of water. At a 15 in days interval is found effective for the checking of the mites. Now, the fungal fruit drop. We can we can say this colletricum drop, or uh, in in case of the uh, 
particularly uh, the fruits mummification is there we can observe a uh, um, uh, means brown color spot there and then near uh, near the uh, style there we, we can see the brown color, color spot and sometimes these symptoms are al also associated with the cracking of the fruit this colitricum uh, is a major uh, colitricum causes major fungal fruit drop in particularly uh, either it may be uh, mandarin or it, it may be uh, in sweet orange then 0.6% of bordeaux bordeaux is effective for the control of the uh, uh, colitricum coc 10 gram or azectobin or diphenyl or 10 ml per 10 liter of water uh, three sprays are necessary at an interval of one month uh, that's actually observed from the july since july it needs we need to have three uh, three spray at a, at an interval of one month again one thing is that uh, earlier i told you regarding this uh, removal or removal of dead wood uh, this uh, this is become at most important to check this uh, colletotricum or uh, fungal fruit drop in next season otherwise uh, this uh, fung fungus will remain with the trees there then phytophthora phytophthora fruit drop it is also called as the, uh, uh, brown uh, brown fruit rot also again there uh, particularly when uh, these uh, during um, uh, means in september onwards uh, we experience too much of the rains uh, such type of the drop is experienced either uh, maybe in mandarin and maybe in sweet oranges then the hosetial al 80 per 80 wp 2.5 gram per liter is effective for the control of the fungal uh, this phytophthora or brown fruit rot then diplodia uh, again uh, here uh, this is experience uh, only after the august and onwards when the uh, fruits are uh, premature to uh, uh, premature to harvestable stage the benzimidol group fungicides are uh, effective benzimidol group like uh, carbendazim benomil these are the effective for the control of fungal fruit drop uh, diplodia due to diplodia now citrus greening citrus greening this is the uh, problem actually um, emerged uh, since a few years particularly central uh, india there in maharashtra and uh, adjoining area we can say see this is uh, um, the fruits uh, remain misshaped there we can see this uh, half color turns uh, yellowish half remain, uh, remains green uh, fruit remains undersized juice sacs are not developed properly and again the leaves have this uh, irregular chloritic patches uh, it is uh, the symptoms are quite different from the uh, zinc deficiency again now uh, actually we cannot uh, um, <laughs> we just maintain the we cannot control the greening there we can maintain the fruits on the tree if we we follow the certain measures there uh, the citrus silla is a um, vector for this uh, um, bacteria particularly uh, that citrus silla is necessary to control imidacloprid 17.8 uh, 2 ml uh, or thymethoxone 25 25% vegetable powder 1 gram per 10 liters of water again it is recommended to have uh, double the dose of the phosphorus fertilizer what we are recommended then zinc sulfate 200 gram plus ferrous sulfate 200 gram plus borate 200 gram uh, that for soil application then tetracycline 60 gram, 60 gram per 100 liter of water it could <coughs> 
it could maintain the uh, fruit or uh, tr fruit on the tre uh, trees uh, the, uh, we cannot actually um, um, miss, destroy the greening we cannot um, uh, kill the greening bacteria there but we can maintain these uh, uh, fruits on the tree with this with the help of uh, this treatment so it's actually the, this, these are the uh, symptoms of this zinc deficiency. You can see regular patches there, and uh, in case, uh, that magnesium de deficiency again very similar to that. But uh, but but these are quite different from the uh, greening one. Then hailstorm. Uh, this is a hailstorm uh, damage fruits. And injuries to roots, injury, injury, uh, sorry, injuries to trunk, twigs, and this uh, lip fall and uh, fruit drop, uh, injuries to fruit that is reported with this uh, hailstorm. Then, Fruit cracking. Uh, fruit cracking uh, again also associated with um, uh, with the uh, fruit drop. Once fruit crack, it has uh, dropped down. But reasons for the fruit cracking is uh, different there. Uh, if we have if if we have this uh, difference in day night temperature, we if we experience uh, dry weather followed by complete uh, uh, wet or rains there, too much irrigation during hot season, um, day-night temperature difference, um, and irrigation after long dry spell, then the number, out numbers of fruits there, such can, uh, situation can cause the uh, cracking of the fruit. Again, these are, um, uh, Boron deficiency again also associated with the cracking of the wood. We can we can have this um, vertical one or transfer crack cracking there, but this this such type of the cracking is major one. Ninety percent of the fruits are observed uh, uh, with such type of the crack cracking. There uh, largely we can see this uh, if you uh, if we have this. Uh, uh, dry weather particularly or hot temperature, these uh, pill loses elastic, elastic, elasticity in particular, but the, once the irrigation is applied there, these uh, tissue, your juice sacs, that means uh, that takes water rapidly and that's why the fruits uh, crack, cracks, crack down. Then misshape or pitted fruits, or uh, the uh, the fruits are uh, the these are largely associated with the phosphorus deficiency, zinc deficiency, calcium deficiency, and these pest and diseases. The pest and diseases um, largely greening uh, and the mites. These are uh, largely respons responsible for the misshaped pitted fruits. Um, then management. It is the monopotassium phosphate 1%, 1% uh, then boron 0.3% or zinc sulfate 0.5% or calcium sulfate 0.3% uh, can um, check this um, in, in, al along with the management practices for the pest and disease management need to be followed. So we reach to the conclusion one thing is that fruit drop is avoidable. We can check the drop by following the good agriculture practices. Uh, this is for all from my end. If you have any question, uh, we will deal in detail there. Students and participants, now the session is open for the discussion.
Any queries are there? You please post in a chat box or you can ask directly. Dr. Paitankar, sir. Yes, sir. You have shown one photograph. Hmm? The photographer of blue drop. Yes, sir. Uh, I have not seen that. Uh, I mean, um, symptom in our areas. But the symptom, what we have seen was uh, looking like the mighty damage. No, can I have a real cut? That yeah, this that one. Previous. Uh, this is a collateral. This no, is no, 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 no. The photographer uh, fruit drop. This is my soul. Yeah. Okay. Another one. But uh, no, fungal, fungal infections. Yes. Yeah. This is sir brown rot. This is brown rot. Okay. Brown rot, sir. Okay. Okay. Will it come mm -hmm. to the? I mean, pericarp. Will it uh, totally rotten that uh, uh, outer layer of the fruit? Yes, yes, yes. It uh, completely rotten the water. Mm. It is not observed in our area. Mm. This is generally uh, during a uh, rainy season, mm. uh, August onward. Um, this is expected to run. In particular, sir, how many flowering seasons you observe uh, in uh, Maharashtra and sweet orange, sir? Sweet orange, actually, we we have um, uh, maybe Ambia, Murug, and Hastabar in particular. But we are clearly seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, acid lime also. As, but the content of flower is less in case of the hastabar, or around ten percent flowers maximum. Oh, remaining two will be full extent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, around fifty to sixty percent in Ambia Bahar. Ambia Bahar flowering is more compared to this uh, rest of the bar. Around thirty to forty percent in Bruga Bahar. Mm -hmm. Bahar is naturally here. Mm -hmm. So, if there are no questions from the participants, can I request our uh, associate dean, sir, remarks, please, sir? Yes. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Paidanka, sir, for your excellent presentation. Thank you, sir. And this uh, one of the important uh, aspects in citrus cultivation, uh, fruit drop and its management. Uh, the topic was very well presented uh, uh, with the wonderful, uh, I mean, uh, very clear slides on each and every aspect of uh, your presentation. I think it was uh, a re a really very uh, useful information to the participants, particularly the students, uh, those who are in final year. Uh, so with, the, with your presentation, they could able to see um, the major uh, uh, problem in uh, citrus crop. Uh, I think with this, uh, with your lecture, um, most of our students as well as our faculty also, they are very much benefited uh, with your uh, very nice presentation. Um, and uh, on behalf of our um, Dr. Vyasar Horticulture University, our Honorable Vice Chancellor and all the university officers and faculty from our college, I once again uh, uh, extend our heartfelt thanks for your uh, nice presentation. And also for readily accepting our uh, uh, I mean, invitation for uh, to be the guest speaker for today's uh, lecture. Uh, though you were, uh, I think you, you were also the sufferer of this COVID. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we hope that you are, uh, I think you have fully recovered from that uh, ailment. Yes, sir. Um, 
Thank you, sir, for your excellent presentation. Thank you. Once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very and, much for uh, giving me opportunity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You are most welcome. Uh, Dr. Padmaja Garu, kindly uh, propose formal vote of thanks to our uh, guest speaker today. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, on behalf of uh, College of Horticulture, Anantra Speta, and the entire fraternity of this institute, I take this opportunity to propose formal vote of thanks with a deep sense of gratitude to all who have helped in uh, organizing today's session. My heartiest thanks to Dr. P. Janakram Garu, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. YSRHU, who is the torch bearer of Citrus Graduate Readings Program in conducting at COH Anantras Beta. I am running short of words to express my humble thanks to Dr. A. S. Padmavatamagaru, Dean of Horticulture, for her constant guidance and moral support in organizing this program in a successful manner. I thank and extend gratitude with due respect to all our beloved university officers for being with us in conduct of today's program. I thank uh, immensely with lots of gratitude for today's uh, distinguished guest speaker, Dr. Dinesh Haridas Paithankar Garu for readily accepting our inv in invitation and uh, sparing his valuable time for making excellent presentation and making this session very interesting and meaningful. The lecture is elaborative, informative, and useful to young budding citriculturists. An event like this cannot happen overnight. It requires proper planning and a bird eye for details. So we have been fortunate enough to have our beloved Associate Dean, Dr. B. Srinivas Sir, convener of this program, for his continuous support in organizing everyday programs successfully. I thank the co-conveners, Dr. K.T. Venkatramnagar, Principal Scientist and Head, HRS Anantras Peta, and Dr. R. Nagaras Garu, Principal Scientist, Head, uh, CRS Tirupati, for their time, kind cooperation in conduct of this program. I thank all the organizing committee members for their meticulous cooperation in organizing this program. My special thanks to a very motivated and dedicated senior colleague, Dr. K. Swaraj Lakshmi, Madam, for her kind cooperation in conducting today's program. So I also thank the people who work behind the screen to extend this event, uh, to execute this event, our team, uh, Dr. Y. Johan and teaching associate, Mr. Nagendra, JCT. So for their continuous support in conducting this webinar successfully. So last but not the least, I would like to thank our budding horticulturists, the students, participants, and teaching and non-teaching staff who have made this event a grand success. Finally, I thank one and all who had devoted their resources and time for smooth conduct of today's program. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Padmaya Garu, uh, for extending a formal vote of thanks to today's guest speaker, Dr. Dinesh Kutanda, sir. Uh, Welcome, sir. Uh, I think we have another uh, uh, guest lecture. Guest speaker. I think uh, the speaker is ready now. Uh, uh, may I take this opportunity to extend warm welcome to the next guest speaker, uh, Dr. VNP Sivaram Krishnagaru. Uh, I think uh, uh, this is the last uh, uh, lecture uh, we are going to have in this uh, Citrus Graduate Readiness Program, uh, which is being organized by the Professor Horticulture University uh, and also the uh, College of Horticulture, Anantara uh, for the, uh, I mean, the benefit of the final year students. And uh, uh, this lecture is uh, some unique thing. This is the this is the last one, last lecture uh, we are going to have in this uh, Citrus Graduate Readiness Program. Uh, I think uh, uh, the earlier speakers uh, they were they were uh, kind enough to accept our uh, invitation and uh, presented very well in all the aspects which they were assigned. I think most of the students uh, got benefited with this program. And today, uh, we are going to have another, uh, I mean, important uh, guest lecture, which is being delivered by our, uh, one of our uh, uh, colleagues here at uh, working at College of Horticulture, Anantara. Uh, I think uh, 
it is time now to invite our dr sivaram krishna garu uh, to kindly uh, uh, present the topic uh, for the students uh, may i now request to dr padmaja garu to kindly uh, uh, i mean uh, introduce our uh, speaker today uh, to the participants okay sir thank you sir program of citrus graduate readiness program okay okay thank you sir Dr. V. N. P. Sivaram Krishna, uh, Associate Professor, Department of Fruit Science, he is a native of Tirupati in Andhra Pradesh. Completed his graduation from S. V. Agricultural College, Tirupati, and post graduation from um, Orissa University of Agriculture and Technology, Bhubaneswar, as J. R. S. Sir did doctoral degree from uh, Dr. I. S. R. Horticulture University, Vengatramana Gudem. Presently working as associate professor and head department of fruit science, College of Horticulture, Anantras Peta. In his 20 years service, worked in projects involving extension, research, and education in the field of horticultural crops. As a scientist, horticulture at ARS, that C established seven trials on various fruit crops and practically demonstrated them about the management of dry root rot disease and crop regulation practices by following modern methods. He also established a model fruit nursery worth of 17 lakhs funded by SHM at ARS Darcy. So thereafter, he worked as scientist horticulture at AACRP on the tropical fruit crops. You know, Tirupati involved in planting of 15 new research projects on sweet orange, acid lime, and RKVY sponsored project on banana. He involved in projects like evaluation of alternate rootstocks for sweet orange and acid lime, Elmo rootstock, a promising, a promising rootstock, gaining importance among farming community is also included. He also initiated uh, containerization of uh, nursery as a scientist in, uh, in charge for commercial nursery, produced one lakh uh, disease-free sadguri uh, budlings and uh, 40,000 acid lime seedlings and distributed to the farmers across the country. Sir is also involved in the establishment of various facilities of the department like PG classrooms, laboratory, instructional farm with various fruit crops, collection of germplasm varieties, blocks of um, uh, fruit crops like banana, sapota, jackfruit, cashew, papaya, etc. at this college. Sir also established an experience, uh, experiential learning unit, ELP 410, on uh, organic farming for practically imparting skills to UG students on sustainable farming methods. Sir also delivered uh, oral presentations or abstracts of his research at national and international seminar or symposia, published many research articles, popular articles, book, book chapters, bulletins, and brochures. So, sir also visited many prestigious facilities in the country having horticultural importance and possessed life membership in uh, prestigious professional bodies like uh, Indian Academy of Horticultural Science, New, New Delhi, Society for Promotion of Horticulture, IIHR Bangalore, and Citriculture Society, NRC, Citrus, Nagpur. With this brief introduction, I invite Dr. VNP Sivaram Krishnagaru to deliver his lecture on gap in citriculture. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Padmaja Garu, for reading out my bio data with your nice words. Uh, Welcome, I... sir. <coughs> Good evening and welcome to all the participants. I still feel happy to see 38 participants even after 5.30. I'll do my best to provide valuable information on the topic provided to me. Before going ahead, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to our Vice Chancellor, Dr. T. Janavut Ramgaru, supported by these directors and registrar sir of Dr. Uh, Vaisa Articles University and also associate dean sir, uh, conveners, co conveners for giving me this opportunity. <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
without wasting much time, <clears throat> I need to give some few introductory remarks. Why? Because the topic given to me is good agriculture practices in cultivation of citrus fruits, specifically in acid lime and citrus. And uh, here and there, I'm using the quinoa also uh, as per the uh, requirement. Um, so far, um, so many experts and my previous speakers have uh, uh, almost uh, um, presented every information which included under the good agriculture practices. Um, uh, after that, uh, I find uh, such information, but uh, could get uh, very little information which I can add and made it more effective. Um, that's why I am taking few more time for uh, uh, giving my elaborate information on uh, the topic given to me. Yeah. Sir, uh, how to share? Uh, madam, will you please guide me here? I am unable to share it. Sir, route le da. Route le, madam. Share route le da. Add route le da. First, to, to just to open the PPT, uh, <laughs> then go for sharing, sir. Keep uh, your uh, PPT in minimized form, then open for share option, sir. Already so, in, a, in a full uh, full show manner. Sir, sir, sir first to me, Pitta e Malla join one, sir. Approve uh, share out, in, sir. Mir Pitta e Malla join, rejoin one, sir. Leave this a matter, leave it. Mir leave a Mali join our sir. Okay. Good evening. We already filed minimum change, sir. File minimum change. Sir, Ram Krishna sir is going to join and again uh, he is going to start his uh, presentation. Meanwhile, I would like to interact with our students. Today's uh, topic uh, that given by our uh, uh, Paitanka sir, it is a very good topic. Uh, this is a major problem in citrus. Every farmer. Uh, is uh, uh, who are in uh, cultivating uh, acid lime or sweet orange or mandarin they are facing lot of problem uh, uh, with the fruit drop there are number of uh, causes for fruit drop even uh, if in irrigation if it is uh, if it, even in irrigation if it is having fluctuations in uh, giving irrigation that may lead to uh, fruit drop generally we are recommending uh, that uh, growth hormones the hormonal uh, imbalance if it is there it also leads to fruit drop. And uh, sir uh, told how it is uh, working, the gene level, it is how it is uh, giving the genes responsible for abscission uh, zone and how abscission is formed and how it is rectified when uh, our hormones, uh, we are using hormones for uh, controlling of fruit drop. Mm -hmm. That is more important uh, when uh, you are going to join as a horticulture officer or uh, horticulture extension uh, Officers, if you are going to join in uh, future, ah, uh, many of the farmers will be asking these questions to you. So follow the lectures, sir, follow the uh, 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 request all the students. Uh, uh, file open to uh, lectures. Note down the important points. Number of points are covered. Uh, deficiency of nutrients, deficiency of nitrogen, deficiency of carbon dioxide. Screen share and is the bottom oh, participants um, chart. Yeah. It is uh, good agricultural practices are going to influence uh, uh, fruit drop. Hmm? 
proving of uh, avoiding deep cultivation. Even uh, selection of internal crop. Uh, in uh, the chart in the yes, sir, discuss ah, about the alternate ah, post. Ah, screen, share screen. No, 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 just now. For a fruit sucking march, huh? they are completely I clear. Change, cycle yeah, on the, change, uh, uh, alternate post. So keeping the uh, uh, garden clean is also sir. important. Pachin, sir. Screen Thank you, sir. Ram Krishna. Please continue. Starting, starting slide, Kellan, sir. Slide no change. Now it is visible, sir. Your screen is visible. Okay, okay. First slide, please. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, first slide. Yes, sir. Yes. Everything is fine. Yes, sir. You can go for uh, sl uh, slide show, sir. Yes, a minute. I think it is in slideshow. Yes, already is in slideshow, madam. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. fine. Yes, sir, already. Carry on, yes. sir. Yeah. Carry on, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, madam. Thanks for the support. <clears throat> yeah, students, uh, dear students, actually, uh, <clears throat> I feel like uh, telling like a class to you, okay? Uh, instead of a virtual, uh, I mean, one, one way speaking or presenting my lecture, I feel like telling you some important things about this citrus crop. These are very much required for you to understand my uh, presentation. In, uh, it's going to uh, be held in another few minutes. You all very well know this citrus crop is a versatile crop. Why it is called a versatile crop means it is versatile in way of its uh, climatic requirements. You see like uh, one side you will find the Acid lime is sweet orange, grown in the tropical and subtropical regions. Mandarins require a little cool climate. And again, a few varieties like um, grapefruit are not available in few countries. So like that, it is versatile by, of, by way of its uh, climatic requirement, by way of its uh, flowering habits, and also its, uh, finally, its uh, flowering behavior. Okay, you see, this uh, mandarin fruit crop flowers only once in a year. And if you, you can watch other fruit crops in citrus itself, like uh, acid lime and sweet orange, which will have two to three seasons, you all very well know. So due to its versatile nature, it is uh, always throwing challenges to the pomologist as well as the fruit breeders. So one side of the coin, other side of the coin, the uh, citrus fruits like acid lime and sweet orange are highly profitable foods for the farming community. That's why we need to focus, work on meeting those challenges and finally making the farmer to get benefited by this crop. So coming back to the subject of uh, uh, good agriculture practices, <clears throat> good agriculture practices are usually the normal practices only, which have been followed by a farmer, it is not altogether a new scheme, but in a, an effective way, which will be helpful for the farmers without disturbing the uh, I mean, environment and also without disturbing the ecological balance and uh, not causing any residual toxicity in the, uh, the fruits or the produce which you gain out of it. <coughs> So to understand the uh, citrus crop, you have to closely watch the crop. Like any other crop like mango, or uh, which uh, seasons once a year, is not like uh, um, you see in the citrus uh, for, uh, crops like acid lime or sweet orange, which flowers around the year. So there is a overlapping of the vegetative as well as the flowering season in the citrus crop which need to be thoroughly observed, then only you will become master of this crop. Okay, for that reason only, the flower regulation came to existence in citrus. So we need to alter, or we need to regulate the flowering in sweet, uh, sweet orange to get the, the flowering or fruiting, we can say, 
when a farmer will get the maximum price. Usually, for instance, if you take the um, sweet orange fruits, which time will be more preferable for you? It is in summer only. During summer, the acid lime or the sweet orange will give the maximum price to the farmer. Sometimes I heard that even I experienced that sometimes the acid lime may cost one fruit about five rupees. Similarly, sweet orange also. There are farmers who become luckiest uh, in with one bumper. So there is a lot of importance for regulating the flowering in the sweet orange and acid lime. Yeah, I'm, I'm going ahead with my presentation. So crop, crop regulation or flower regulation involves so many factors. As, as I told you, the, the, there will be a continuous production of the uh, vegetative as well as the flowering in the plant. There won't be any rest at all. So we need to create it, uh, the rest or the stress, so, so that uh, the CN ratio will get uh, changed inside the plant and it, so that it will give the lot of flowering and fruiting in the ensuing season. Whenever, this is my personal observation, whenever there is no any, any growth or the flowering, when the plant looks so dull means it would have 50% chance of getting infected with the dry root rot in citrus. This is a clear cut indication I observed. It will stay without any appearance, it will stay for one or two months means certainly the tree would have affected with the dry root rot or some uh, greening, something like that, which may cause death of the plant. So, like there so many tricks are there, I will gradually explain you one after the other as, as the slides move ahead. <coughs> So, in a nutshell, identifying the right crop having the right demand is also a practice. Identify right climate for a right crop, soil without any negative effects. That means problematic soils we should always avoid. Integrated methods, this is another point where we need to focus on, not just simply depending on chemicals or even on the organic methods only will not will create imbalance in the crop and only affecting the food production. Suitable for exports and it's white acceptability. This acceptability may differ with the country to country or state to state based on their food habits as well as their choice of preference of the taste. For example, if you see the mango, we eat uh, our mangoes which are available, mango like Benishan, all the varieties are very much acceptable to us. But once you enjoy, uh, once you taste the, um, the, um, um, uh, the uh, mango fruit, which you see in other countries like Hedden, these crops, you know, at Tommy Atkins, you cannot even release the taste of mango. Like that, every region or every country have their own choices. So we need to go as per their preference for exporting to other countries. And uh, we need to always focus on good agriculture practices, identifying the right crop, which can able to earn the, a good income to the farmer. That's also very important. Eco-friendly technologies are already there by utilizing the solar and wind power, provide and, um, and also the renewable resources availability need to be uh, assessed. Uh, last but not least, cost of production must be kept low. For example, we, we, we all very well know in the recent past that India is the largest producer of banana. But our banana, when compared with the international market, is having less demand. Why? The cost of production is more for us. Why? We are growing the banana as an irrigation crop. Whereas in the, the countries which are dominating the exports are growing the banana as an irrigated crop only with their regular rainfall. So like that, cost of production must be kept it low. Then only it is acceptable for the export. As expressed in Food and Agriculture Organization's bulletin, Pang Yu and his co-workers in 2014, the has uh, told that the concept of good agriculture practices due to the rapid changes in the increased globalization of food supply, as well as the trust and confidence of the stakeholders to the safety control and quality assurance of the food production, and also environmental sustainability of agriculture systems. This is the been mentioned in the uh, Food and Agriculture uh, Organizations 
uh, bulletin. Just a minute. I'm just changing my view. Yeah, now this is okay. I'm going to the standard view. Yeah. So coming to the what is the need? Then good agriculture practices uh, that addresses the environmental issues, the economical and social sustainability issues for on farm processes and uh, resulted in the safe and quality food and non food agricultural products. Advantages of good agriculture practices. Reduce the main aim is to reduce the cost of production. That's the main aim of the good agriculture practices. Improve the crop productivity. Conservation and management of the natural resources. Reducing the pesticide residue levels in the fruits and a high benefit and cost ratio. At the end of the day, farmers should get benefited by this. Good agriculture practices concept is a, a, a production <coughs> mode that keeps the agriculture production under control, but not by damaging the environment, human and animal health, and providing sustainability and food security by the way of certification of the crops. Good agriculture practices are farming itself. It's not an alternative to agriculture production mode. As I told you earlier, it's not an alternative um, uh, model. It's only just a farming itself. Good agriculture practices describes as understanding uh, practices that followed to produce and eat safe crops, which is compatible with environmental sustainability. So, some scientists uh, express their opinion. What is the meaning of uh, GAP? Nirmala, in 2015, has expressed the impacts of GAP on small farmers and enhanced profitability and sustainability of farms. Ganpat and his co-workers in the year 2014 stated that good agriculture practices adoption has potential to address the consumer's needs for safety food and the, uh, and the requirement for the export of produce and educational extension services and governmental interventions play an important role to adapt to the GAPs. Improving the natural resource utilization, workers' health, working conditions, consumers' and farmers' families' health, etc. Bajon and his co workers in the year 2013 showed that GAPs' adoption play an important role to guarantee food safety and quality and enable farmers to gain new market opportunities by, by improving the supply chain control. So that as it's a movement by collective way of farmers, it will be helpful for them to gain more and more opportunities for improving the supply chain among themselves. Sandra in 2011, in his study about the outcome of GAP adoption by the farmers included that Working among the farmer groups and uh, linking to other farmer support institutions and create food safety protocols and improve the farmer's farm management and productivity. GAPs play an important role to strengthen the competition in the market, promote the export markets, develop export revenues, and help the rural economy. And, uh, Mushubaji and Santa Coloma in 2010 in Tanzania indicated that the GAPs not only have no harmful effect on consumer health, but also improve market access, quality assurance, country economy, and produces livelihoods too. Now, here comes the good agriculture produces good agriculture practices to be followed for the production of the fruit crops. As I told you earlier, it is not altogether a new scheme. It's a, a farming system only wherein we will be following the special concepts to be followed. We'll be following it. Like uh, 
for example, we will identify a right plant, as I told you earlier, right plant for the right climate, which can able to give maximum yield without losing its quality. So we will identify the right variety. Then coming to the climate, not all the climates are suitable for, equally suitable for all the food crops. Okay, so we, we, we need to identify a right climate by seeing with our experience only. So it is already there. As we cannot be able to change the uh, climate, we need to identify the suitable fruit crop as per the climate. Planting methods. As you are all seeing, there are so many methods of planting, uh, methods of planting, like high density planting, ultra high density planting. Intercropping systems have been followed here and there. So, in a developed nation, sir, growing of intercrops is a rare practice. They always go for increasing the number of plants per unit area and get the maximum. Why? The reason is, the reason is, you will have a uniform crop spread over the different area and you will follow the uniform practices of providing good irrigation, good fertilizer and even micronutrients. All the practices as they all look alike will be more benefiting to the farmer as well as to the uh, I mean, to get a maximum yields with good quality. So, like that, we need to change the planting methods also. Coming to the important factor, which provides the nutrition. You all very well know, without appropriate nutrition, you cannot make good productivity with the quality. So, here comes the um, addition of appropriate nutrients to the soil or to the plant. Okay. Number one, it's all well known. We all very know, well know that chemical fertilizers we are using. It is the practice being followed across the globe. There's no doubt about that. But too much of application leads to degradation of the soils. So accordingly, we need to change the, apply the nutrients, not just in the form of the chemicals only. We need to change it the similar nutrients are the uh, fertilizers, I mean fertilizers in the form of other forms like uh, organic forms. Like there are so many organic uh, menus are available um, in the market are available with us. So whenever you are applying uh, any nutrient or a fertilizer, you see that the nutrient 50% uh, of the recommended dose needs to be met from the organic side and 50% of the um, um, nutrient requirements should be from the inorganic side. Then you will have a, a sustainable way of doing the practice. This is like this. We can and now recently our technology has given us the way um, to identify some solubilizing bacteria. Okay, some solubilizing bacteria like uh, nitrogen solubilizing bacteria. I mean, um, uh, mobilizing bacteria, PSB, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria. Potassium solubilizing bacteria, zinc solubilizing or mobilizing bacteria, these are all available in the markets. We need to supply in the form of biofertilizers also to have a sustainable production. And we need to add, again, concentrated organic menus also. So, <clears throat> we need to have a balanced application of the fertilizers or the nutrients both in the form of organic as well as in the inorganic field, in inorganic plants. In the, earlier, there was a concept, organic production. Organic production does not mean that simply are applying only that. Okay, so from the organic, we are going towards the sustainable way of farming systems. Okay, if you go, keep on applying only organic, it's a known fact, it's an already proven fact across the globe that yields have drastically come down. Okay, so we need to approve, uh, adopt a via media that means sustainable farming systems wherein we can add all these aspects. See, I will tell you one more thing. Why this good agriculture practices systems have come into the existence? Especially in the country like India, you, you have to again, Go back to your 70 years where during the independence, we were suffering and people are dying due to lack of sufficient food. 
due to starvation. So the, during that time, government of India has identified to develop uh, more and more fertilizer units so that uh, more and more productivity will be there among the rice and the wheat uh, so that we can able to feed the already existing population or growing population. They increase the establishment of more and more fertilizer units across the country. So automatically along the um, uh, fertilizer units, uh, they developed the input industry like uh, protection chemicals and then weed sites. All this coexisted since the, up to the recent past. That caused more and more chemicals entered into the uh, system, ecosystem, causing the residual effect. And it has got serious impact on the human as well as the animal health. So now the government of really, uh, India has already realized that after reaching the sustainable production of food grains, now we have reached the stage of producing 250 million tons of food grains. And at the time of independence, we are at 23 million tons only. So we have reached the sustainable, so, uh, we can able to sustain our population. And also we have reached a stage where we can export the food to the other countries also, food grains to the other countries also. Now we are focusing on gradually moving towards the totally inorganic or chemical agriculture to the organic or sustainable methods of doing the practices, agricultural practices. That, that's why the role of the GAP has come into the existence. Especially if you see the developed nations, uh, there only the importance of GAP is very high. They, this, they follow stringent rules when they import it from especially India and other developing nations. Why it is so? If you see, think back, all the chemical industries which are established in India are from the Europe, like Syngenta, DuPont, BASF, all these are from the Europe. Why? Why? Because the reason is we are using indiscriminately over the crops. So we need to bring down the usage to avoid the chemicals residues in the producers. So finally, what I want to tell you is, especially in case of the um, uh, I mean, um, fertilizer application, we have to add not only chemicals along with green leaf menus, green menus, biofertilizers, considered organic menus like cakes, we can say, and also along with the farmyard manure and vermicompost. Why? Because the uh, fertilizer application is not just restricted only to the application of major nutrients. We need to have, have add micronutrients also. Micronutrients Deficiency is causes the hidden hunger that it won't be useful to the plant, but it will have a drastic impact on the production as well as the quality of the produce that is produced by the plant or the orchard. So there must be a balanced application of all the things. Coming to the good agriculture practices in the irrigation methods. Yeah. Like that, irrigation also. We cannot. Uh, just like that, use the irrigation water waste through wastage. Advanced methods have come like drip irrigation. Drip irrigation, by following the drip irrigation system, we can bring down the usage of the irrigation water to 50% of the actual rate. Okay? In a flood irrigation, if you can able to uh, I mean, um, irrigate one acre area, in the drip irrigation, it is useful to sustain the needs of irrigation needs of five acres. Almost one is to three to one is to five um, the, um, in, um, ratio. So, a lot of water will be saved by following the drip irrigation system. Similarly, fertigation also. Fertigation, in that fertigation also, wherein we will be adding fertilizer to the irrigation. The same, the fertilizer directly will go through the um, pipes and uh, including the mains and sublines and letters and just drop at the Draw, uh, dropped at the rhizosphere or at the root zone depth of the plants, which makes the plant effectively utilize the chemical, I mean, nutrients. That is the important reason for following the modern methods of irrigation. Weeding, you all very well know, even in your our farm, I mean, um, uh, farms, you are observing so many weeds, everywhere weeds. One irrigation, I mean, one rain, two years rain makes the weeds to come like anything. How to irrigate, I mean, control the weeds. 
you, you all very well know that uh, plowing, deep plowing is the best method. There are again so many implements like um, plows and rotavator, I mean cultivators, then rotavators for various purposes. We need to go for deep plow so that the seeds that are fallen on the surface will go down and won't germinate. And it can able to protect the field without weeds or minimum of three to, I mean, four to six months. So there is a need to develop a fully integrated organic management system that will promote the production and be environmentally sound. Health and vigorous orchards produce high quality foods at the best possible cost and also reduce the need for the chemical treatments. So that includes site preparation, soil management, water management, including irrigation and drainage. Not only irrigation, drainage also needs to be given appropriate importance. Why? Because one good drain may make the entire field get submerged under water. Uh, first and foremost enemy to the horticulture is submergence. Horticulture um, crops cannot tolerate the submergence of water nutrient management and pest management. Growers can adjust each component to maximize profits while protecting the environment. Now coming to the components of GAP. As I already told you, the soil management. We need to thoroughly manage the soil for improving the organic matter content that I am coming in the slides to come. So I will explain you at that time when I get those. Uh, so soil management, water management, crop and fodder production is a common practice you follow growing a fodder as into crop as they, uh, they, we can say it as a uh, as a mulch or avoiding the weeds crop production we will follow the integrated pest management uh, or integrated disease management methods uh, as a plant, crop protection measures harvest and uh, on farm processing and storage energy and waste management human welfare health and safety, wildlife and landscape conservation. These are the components of the good agriculture practices. <clears throat> Kashavaj and his uh, co-workers in 2016 has expressed that the aim of those technologies are absorbent new market advantages by improving supply chain control, improving natural resource utilization, workers' health, working conditions, consumers and farmers' family health and creating new market opportunities for the farmers and also require obtain new skills and competencies. Some of the practices are summer plow, as I told you, crop rotation, sowing of crop at the right time, at the right geometry, use of pest and disease resistant varieties, use of good quality inputs, <clears throat> organic and um, green menu crops. And uh, interestingly, some of the already existing, already existing indigenous technologies. There are um, recently I saw one um, brochure being published by ICR, where an indigenous technology around 200 technologies were portrayed by, been followed across the country were portrayed in that book. Like that, there are already existing indigenous technologies which we need to give appropriate popularity. <clears throat> so soil fertility. I told you the good agriculture practices are majorly moving around soil, soil, climate, and the plant. Soil is the major uh, I mean, component in the good agriculture practices. We need to protect the soil fertility by following the appropriate measures. Several soil characters affect the soil fertility, as you all know. These include pH, organic matter, and cation exchange capacity, CEC. Optimum pH of soil and irrigation water is uh, between 6 and 6.5. So we always see that the pH must be between 6 and 6.5. Why? For to see that uh, all nutrients are available to the plant. Cation exchange capacity, CEC, is a measure of 
how well the soil holds most new, uh, most uh, mineral nutrients. This is another important uh, um, uh, uh, parameter to say the fertility of, to indicate the fertility of the soils. A higher content of soil organic matter is generally preferred because in most uh, it will lead to the higher uh, cation exchange capacity and water holding capacity of particular soil. We need to improve the organic matter content. Salinity. This is again an important parameter causing um, uh, an enemy or uh, causing damage to the uh, growth of the plants. Due to the reduced rainfall as a result of climate change, salinity increase in the, particularly in arid and semi-arid regions. Citrus considered a very sensitive crop for soil salinity. So high salinity disturbs the growth and productivity of citrus. Hence, application of soil conditioners uh, uh, arbuscular mycorrhiza and proper fertilizers could minimize the hazards of salinity and improve the citrus productivity. Now here comes the, the overall picture of the availability of various nutrients as per the pH of the soil. You see, in this, uh, coming to this uh, area, acidic, neutral and the alkaline. In the neutral range, you will find so many nutrients are made available to the plant. And if you move towards the acidic, it causes the major nutrient deficiencies. And under the slight acidic conditions, iron, manganese, boron, and copper are available. But too much, it, when it crosses the, but the mark, it, it, it will make them also unavailable to the plant. To so moving towards the alkaline, strong alkaline, you see, <clears throat> you will find the trace element deficiencies. Molybdenum is the only element which is available in the alkaline conditions. Slight alkaline conditions, not filling. Soil moisture. Citrus water requirement ranging from 8,000 to 10,000 meter cube of water per hectare per yearly, depending on the different factors like uh, climatic conditions, soil, growth stage, etc. The fluctuation in soil moisture affect uh, negatively on growth and productivity of the citrus. There are various negative effects of long drought period on citrus, <clears throat> including the dropping of flowers and setback on the fruit set. And also, it affects the new flushes growth. And main branches are badly affected by the drought conditions. So, <clears throat> drought is highly dangerous for the citrus. So, we need to give appropriate moisture in the form of irrigation at appropriate time. It is also observed that during flowering as well as the fruiting season, if the plant undergoes stress, there is every possibility of great loss to the farm. High water table clay pans with the poor drainage measured in water logging in deeper layers of the soil. Excessive soil moisture can more damaging to citrus trees than drought. So excess moisture is, that's, I, I told you, you know, stagnation will cause more damage than the drought. So if the uh, tree is get submerged uh, of its root zone, a minimum of three days will cause severe damage to the root system followed by the tree decline and possible death of the tree is also possible. Water logging reduces the amount of oxygen that is available for root respiration and therefore inhibits the root growth. In addition, Growth of the harmful microbes may also occur. In anaerobic conditions, it is always is a known fact that harmful microbes will drastically grow and useful microbes existence will drastically come down. So, so under the submerged conditions or anaerobic conditions, harmful microbes, are, uh, microbes will build and cause the harm to the tree. If these conditions last uh, more than 70 hours, root death is likely to occur. Here in the urate injury, you can see in this photograph and causes the infection sites, soil bound pathogens such as phytophthora, phytophthora and uh, which can further, further reduce the root growth. <coughs> Quality of irrigation water. So, other than the plant, soil, and the climate, water plays a vital role in maintaining the good agriculture practice of any orchard. The best quality of water should not be alkaline or containing high levels of 
bicarbonates. The specific concentration at which bicarbonates begin to affect the root, uh, citrus root growth is exactly not known. Why? Because it varies. It depends on the, again, other parameters also. That's why we cannot exactly assess it. But lower the concentration should be always preferred over the higher concentrations of the, um, I mean, um, um, uh, bicarbonates. Some evidence suggests that the concentrations higher, higher than the 100 ppm of bicarbonates will negatively affect the root growth. Coming to the temperature, though it's a climatic factor, it has got uh, drastic influence on the, uh, uh, not only the growth, on the um, uh, performance of the entire tree, like flowering and fruiting, everything. Citrus grows well between 10 to 30 degrees centigrade. Vegetative growth starts at 12 degrees, 12.8 degrees centigrade, while the optimum growth of the citrus fruits uh, are between 25 to 30 degrees centigrade. So 30 degrees centigrade is considered to be optimum conditions for the photosynthesis of the plant, dry matter production, which increases the tree vigor and productivity. Then growth increases with the rising temperature up to 35 degrees centigrade, while the growth gradually decreases with the further increase of temperature. And almost stopped at 14 degrees or 50 degrees. Also. So, high temperatures are dangerous, and similarly, low temperatures less than the required temperature is also dangerous. So, usually 3 degrees centigrade, that's all. So, low temperatures up to 3 degrees centigrade are bearable by the plant. For the flower, uh, flower and the new shoots are burning under cold temperatures, minus 1.7 degrees centigrade is clearly seen. So, less than zero or less than three degrees centigrade is highly dangerous or injurious to the citrus crop. Now, coming to the healthy plants. How to identify the healthy plants in the nursery? Always the plant, uh, purchase the plants from reliable source, preferably from the nurseries run by the government universities and government approved. As I already told my previous speakers, I no need to elaborate further. But here I'm focusing on. Uh, and, and emphasizing to get quality planting material. Usually in citrus, it is very rare to get quality material. And uh, rarely these private nurserymen are following the uh, I mean, um, certification procedures been laid down by the government. So, but the certification uh, usually is followed in government organizations or few organizations which are uh, having their own bud block or progen archer. So certification in citrus also, I think my previous speakers have covered nicely. Um, selection of mother block. So mother plant, the pretty block, we need to identify appropriate tree from the um, uh, pedigree block or the uh, progeny block. Have a based on the yield quality, pest and disease test. Detection of yield through the ELISA method. Uh, production of mother plant. So we need to identify various trees. Uh, um, um, by by uh, covering with the insect proof nets. Safe propagation. All the implements that are used by the gardeners must be cleaned, disinfected before again, or sanitized before starting the work. Production of the planting material, budded plants are kept in the inside the um, in the net house, rooted from the insect vectors. So here just uh, I'm showing the archers how to, I um, mean, usual system has been followed. Sometimes it is rectangular and mostly it is square only. So, normal uh, spacing, as you all know, 606. For lemon and uh, limes, it is 4.5. But under our system, our farmers are following 66 and 6 only. Identity planting. Uh, closer, planting uh, closer spacing is also uh, followed to accommodate the maximum number of plants per unit area. So this uh, is the information. Uh, acid lime probably two point five is uh, possible. Already the, uh, this information is about, uh, I mean, um, told by my previous speaker. To save time, I'm just skipping. So
I mean, with the system, this already I have covered. So we need to follow different pattern. Uh, young plants uh, should be irrigated at weekly intervals. That's all based on the climate and uh, um, soil, everything. So layout of drip irrigation system. Now this all you might be knowing uh, various uh, components are there in drip irrigation system. This is the most modern method of irrigation where high efficiency been realized. High uh, water use efficiency been realized. Uh, this, uh, these, are, these are the standards one should know. Deficient levels, optimal levels, high or excess levels. Based on that only we need to go for application of the menus. Integrated nutrient management, as I told you, we need to go for integrated application of the chemicals. Okay, chemicals and uh, organic application that uh, in green leaf menus. All these things are including the biofertilizers are to be applied for a balanced nutrition of the plants. Here also you see these are the research conduct, conducted at ICI air centers, even at Tirupati. So they are using the um, arbuster mycorrhiza, PSB, Azitobacter, and uh, Trichoderma harjanum also. By replacing with 100% and 75, they got good yield. Fertigation is citrus. Uh, this topic I have already covered, wherein uh, we will be using the chemical fertilizers along with irrigation. Drip fertigation of 50% RDF, that is 800 grams of nitrogen, 200 grams of uh, potassium per tree per year. So, soil application of FM for, for 40 kg per tree. Neem cake, uh, 8 kg, uh, like that, uh, uh, were recommended for bearing of bearing soft goody, sweet orange plants. So, these are all the components of drip irrigation. So, fruit drop is another uh, serious problem. Uh, just now, our my sp previous speaker has explained a lot. Um, by following good agriculture practices, we can prevent that also. Fruit thinning. This fruit thinning um, is a usual practice one should follow to avoid the um, um, overbearing of the fruit. The overbearing uh, is very much dangerous in citrus. Um, it will eat away the entire resources, uh, um, carbohydrate resources, uh, reserves in the plant body that so that uh, make. Always. So, here is the rejuvenation of the old orchards. This is another practice been followed. In citrus, after this identification of the dry root rot, the problems like greening, the lifespan of the Orchards have drastically came down, but uh, in some of the places, um, um, the orchards having the plants more than 25 years or 30 years also seen in some parts of the Prakasam and Anantapuram areas. So we can go for rejuvenating regi regi them by following um, some practices. Soil application of 25 cases of FM, 5 cases of Nain uh, multiple microbial culture. So this I'm telling you repeatedly, we need to go for balanced application, including the um, 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 uh, microbial consortia to improve the, uh, I mean, uh, productivity levels of the soils. So one kg of dolomite per year, uh, per, per plant per year with 50% RDF, comprising 100 grams of zinc sulfate, 50 grams of borax per plant as soil application, comprising 100 grams of zinc sulfate. Like that we have to do every time. So this is like that we have to apply the fertilizer application uh, in the rejuvenated gardens. Uh, this is a mandarin garden shown in the photograph. <coughs> so conclusion, sir, <coughs> already we came to the end of almost uh, conclusion stage of our presentation. I will uh, uh, give a overall picture of conclusion. The most and foremost conclusion about the good agriculture practices uh, is uh, the good agriculture practices vary among the people 
and among the countries based on their food habits and choice of the taste and the flavor. So every country has their own preferences. So we need to follow, whenever we feel like exporting to that country, we need to follow their standards. But common interests are always there, like uh, reducing the chemical residues. This is a standard um, a requirement uh, for export. And even for the local markets also, we need to bring down the chemical residues and always follow the environmental sustainable methods as a part of the good agriculture practices. So developing, developed nations are following more and more stringent rules to import the produce from the other countries. <clears throat> Whereas the developed, developing, from, especially from the developing nations. In view of the population explosion across the globe, productivity levels cannot be ignored. Production levels cannot be ignored. To have a uniform distribution of the produce across the globe, we, we, we always should bear in our mind that uh, to produce more and more to distribute among the people. So that always should be kept in the mind before going ahead for the implementation of the good agriculture practices. Sometimes uh, <clears throat> the good agriculture practices are totally different in the system where the rain-fed agriculture has been followed. So the country like India, where we mostly depend on the monsoon rains, southwest and northeast monsoon rains, where plants are exposed to the drought very frequently, we will always follow to go for irrigated systems than the rain-fed systems. So in the rain-fed countries, they will always have their own set of standards with less, very less production cost. So that keeps on changing under the various situations. With these conclusions, I came to the end of today's presentation. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Sivaram Krishna. It's a very Thank nice you. presentation, refreshed all the uh, subject about uh, citrus cultivation, uh, sustainable uh, cultivation, soil, uh, soil characters, uh, and uh, how to protect the environment, and, uh, uh, and definitions that are given by different uh, workers in good about uh, good agricultural practices. And uh, especially even uh, fertilizer application, keeping in view of the quality of the fruit and cost of uh, production and keeping in view of soil health and the combination of organic and inorganic fertilizers application and irrigation management also. It should not be even excess or it should not be uh, creating any drought conditions. It should not have any negative impact on the crop and how it is to be planned. Uh, even uh, uh, application of uh, bio fertilizers uh, and uh, everything, everything is covered. It is a very good refreshing uh, session for the participants, students, uh, especially. Uh, uh, it nicely covered uh, method of application and season and how it is to be, uh, even a high density plantation, how it is to be practiced uh, to get more yield uh, with, with the uh, good profits. Uh, nice lecture. It is uh, nicely covered. Uh, and I, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sivaram Krishnagaru for giving the nice uh, presentation. Actually, one month delayed. Actually, the, the program uh, at, at, as for our uh, uh, first uh, schedule, it should be on 14th of uh, January. Now it is covered on 14th of uh, February. <laughs> uh, uh, very nice, uh, Sivaram Krishna. This is the, I would like to announce that this is the last uh, session in our uh, uh, program, Citrus Graduation Webinar uh, that was initiated on 8th December with 30 sessions. Uh, this is the 30th uh, session uh, with the course director. It is uh, concluded by course director. Uh, it's very good. Um, 
that uh, it is uh, covered two as it is uh, two topics uh, that's why uh, a, a little bit more time it is uh, taken uh, and all the participants are also um, they are also uh, some of these uh, uh, they are having some work personal works now i request of student participants you can interact with the uh, uh, guest speakers you can ask some questions and what are the uh, good agricultural practices what uh, practice it is it, it is uh, it is varying it is varying from uh, uh, place to place region to region uh, and country to country number of people are working on citrus why only why that much work is uh, going on on citrus even today farmers uh, they are in uh, confusion they are having some problems in at field level when they are when farmers are working at field level they are facing so many problems they are facing so many insect pest problems and disease problems uh, that lot of work is going on lot of research work is going on and lot of recommendations are published uh, regarding uh, uh, cultivation practices of crop even though the farmers are having so many queries while uh, while implementing in the field level uh, and developments are being given uh, mechanization in pruning just uh, now in the previous lecture we have seen uh, in high density plantation canopy management is uh, they are doing with the help of a citrus pruner uh, a lot of developments even raised bed technology is developed previously we used to uh, proper uh, popularize and uh, we used to explain to the farmers about double ring method of irrigation and the trunk should not come in contact with the uh, water uh, it will encourage a uh, number of problems like uh, phytophthora disease infestation and gummosis uh, uh, problem it will encourage so we, uh, now the technology is uh, changing now the raised bed method of uh, um, uh, cultiv cultivation is uh, uh, popularized uh, even uh, bodo paste application bodo mixture spraying and application of bio fertilizers Uh, it is also important to maintain soil health it is very important uh, we have to protect that na natural resource the earth it is to be protected by following uh, uh, certain uh, practices uh, soil health management practices uh, in discrimination of in discriminate application of any chemical any pesticide or insecticide fungicide or, or, or even uh, chemical fertilizers it is not recommended it is not desirable even now uh, we have to protect our natural resources uh, so it is a refreshing uh, uh, session uh, students are uh, uh, they got benefited out of uh, this session now i request our associate dean sir uh, to uh, to give her uh, his remarks on this session thank you good evening sir good evening uh, dr saraj krishnan uh, uh, it is really wonderful lecture uh, given by dr sivaram krishnan on the gap good agricultural practices in uh, citrus uh, the topic is very well presented uh, with uh, good illustrations and uh, and photographs also uh, the topic is itself is a good agricultural practices it is uh, very well presented uh, i think the students are very much benefited with this uh, uh, i mean presentation i think this uh, one topic uh, uh, which covers all the aspects uh, right from the uh, planting to the i mean uh, which cover irrigation aspect manuring aspect and different types of uh, planting uh very very useful lecture today we have at the end of this uh, citrus graduate admissions program uh, i think uh, uh, with all the cooperation of uh, uh, course directors uh, both course directors dr saraj krishnan garu and dr vn p sivaram krishnan garu uh, and the uh, conveners co conveners and all the um, mean the other members in the committee uh, particularly the uh, participants uh i see that uh, rishab uh, uh, from uh, shgat alhabar uh, i think he is also there in this uh, program uh, right from the beginning from uh, starting from the uh, lecture 1 to the 30 30th lecture he was there in this uh, presentation 
uh, i think most of the students uh, they got benefited uh, by this wonderful uh, program uh, which the university has uh, uh, programmed uh, particularly for the benefit of the final year students and today is also i think one of the course directors have presented the topic at the end of the session this is also one wonderful uh, moment to remember uh, that it, uh, though it is delayed by one month but it is very well presented today uh, with a lot of uh, information right from uh, when as i said that from a to z in citrus you have covered and uh, i am also thankful uh, 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 to all my colleagues i mean uh, teachers and my supporting staff uh, particularly the teaching associates uh, particularly dr yohan uh, and also the technical uh, assistant uh those who have uh, helped a lot in completing this program successfully um i mean within uh, though, it, though it was uh, uh, i mean uh, today delayed by one and a half hour uh, but most of the students were there uh, in this program i mean attentively listening to both the lectures uh, it is really uh, a happy moment to share uh, with all of you Uh, that we could able to complete this uh, marathon program uh, started uh, uh, from the guest lecture 1 to 30 uh, i think the, all the programs went on very well uh, 30 lectures uh, were of highly uh, i mean useful uh, highly with a lot of content uh, in every lecture uh, and the, particularly this uh, this type of uh, uh, event uh, Uh, is very noteworthy uh, in the history of the college uh, that such a long uh, lengthy marathon program uh, with good lectures uh, from the eminent speakers particularly those who are expertise in citrus cultivation uh, presented their uh, topics for the benefit of the students uh, all the topics were really uh, uh, wonderful uh, with lot of uh, i mean uh, information uh it has helped not only the students but also the faculty who have attended all these programs uh particularly myself i was very much impressed uh, by the way uh, the guest speakers have presented on uh, their topics uh, uh for the benefit of the students uh, without any uh, i mean the uh, disturbance uh though we are in the third wave of covid Uh, we could able to uh, complete this program uh, with the support of all the uh, guest speakers and all the i mean uh, members the committee members uh, right from the uh, course directors uh, to the technical assistants who have helped us a lot in bringing out this program uh, most successfully i think uh, uh, with this uh, 30th lecture Uh, we are going to conclude this uh, program the citrus graduate readiness program and uh, one thing is uh, uh, we have to uh, program for the valedictory function uh, i hope uh, by this evening or tomorrow morning we'll get the information from the university in city side uh, so with the instructions of honorable vice chancellor and uh, uh, dean of horticulture and all the university officers uh, we are going to have this uh, valedictory function uh i think we will get the information by uh, tomorrow morning uh the information has been uh, uh, forwarded to you as soon as we receive the message i request all the uh, participants uh, to kindly attend the uh, valedictory function also uh, so that there will be some good messages from the honorable vice chancellor and university officers and some of the guest speakers will also be invited for this uh, uh, valedictory function Uh, so i request uh, uh, all the participants of today's program and uh, in earlier programs also uh, i request to kindly participate in the valedictory function also uh, with this few remarks i once again uh, extend my heartfelt thanks to dr swaram krishnan for your excellent thank you, thank you sir thank you madam uh, very good information you have provided provided uh, at the end of this session uh, once again thank you for your uh, excellent presentation
Uh, we now request uh, Dr. Swaraj Nishnagar to propose a formal vote of thanks to our uh, Dr. Swaraj Nishnagar. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's my pleasure to say, uh, uh, to express uh, my formal vote of thanks on behalf of Associate Dean, College of Horticulture, Anand Rajpeta, uh, for this session. Good evening to all dignitaries. Uh, today's uh, guest speaker, uh, second guest speaker, Dr. VNP Sivram Krishnagaru. We are very happy, sir, that uh, you have covered elaborately uh, on good agricultural practices uh, in citrus, sir. Now, I uh, express my glad to, and uh, I, I am I'm glad to express my vote of thanks for this session. Uh, uh, first, our uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Dr. T. Janagiram Garu. Uh, he's behind us in planning for this uh, program. And I express my uh, gratitude to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, for encouraging us for conducting this session. And uh, it's my pleasure to express my thanks to all university officers and uh, our Dean of Horticulture, Dr. Patmautamma, Madam, who is uh, behind us, giving strength in conducting all the programs. And uh, to uh, course, uh, course uh, convener, Dr. P. Srinivasil, sir, and course co-convener, Dr. K.T. Ramana, sir, Dr. Uh, R. Nagaraj, sir, uh, and uh, Dr. C. Madhmati, Madam, uh, who are behind us in, in conducting this session on uh, all committee members. Now I express my thanks to our committee members, all uh, uh, committee members uh, who are uh, constantly helping us in conducting this uh, session. Sir. Uh, so, and uh, our students, student participants, even though they are having uh, their activities, uh, busy with their, busy with their activities, they're also joining uh, these uh, sessions and uh, participating in the session. They are uh, very important uh, for making our program a grand success. Uh, now, uh, my humble uh, thanks are uh, today's uh, to uh, Dr. VNP Sivaram Krishna for accepting our invitation and also for sparing his valuable time in spite of busy, busy schedule. He prepared a good refreshing uh, uh, PPT with all uh, good advanced uh, uh, updates in the uh, GAP in citrus, uh, good agricultural about uh, good agricultural practices in citrus. And uh, now I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to all the staff uh, who are behind us: Yohan, Nagendra, uh, Firoz, uh, uh, Chandra Mohan Reddy, and all uh, uh, organizing committee members uh, who are giving. Uh, kind of constant guidance, uh, constant support to us in conducting these uh, sessions. My, and all I express, uh, uh, my appreciation goes to non-teaching staff and all beloved students who are participating in all the sessions and today's sessions uh, uh, of this uh, Citrus graduation webinar with enthusiasm and made uh, the sessions and even today's session a grand success. Thank you one and all. Thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, for conducting these sessions and for uh, and expressing my vote of thanks for this session and even for this concluding session for this webinar. This is the concluding session, 30th uh, session for this webinar uh, session. This is the concluding session and we, we, uh, uh, we are eagerly waiting for the confirmation of the date for conducting our um, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, valedictory session. If the information is uh, after receiving information confirmation from our uh, vice chancellor sir we will be going to conduct and we will inform to all the participants and i request all the participants to join join for this valedictory session thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you dr swaraj lakshmigaru for proposing uh, formal vote of thanks to our guest speaker today uh, it is nice uh, to uh, have you all uh, for this program uh, and I once again uh, uh, invite all the uh, participants for the valedictory function also. Uh, 
with this uh, uh, few words, uh, I'll see you back at the valedictory function, uh, which is going to be held soon as per the instructions from the university. Thank you once again uh, uh, to the guest speaker and Dr. Swaraj Lashmigaru and all other uh, my colleague teachers and my dear students for their uh, participation uh, in this marathon program of Citrus Graduate Readiness Program 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks for Thank your Thank you. Staying with us up to the last point, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes. It is all with your support and the support of the students and from the encouragement given by our university officers and our vice chancellor, uh, we could be able to complete this program successfully. Uh, thank you one and all for your, for your excellent cooperation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.